hadith. We are going to check what the Quran says concerning people who talk about hadith other than the Quran. Because the only hadith I know that is authentic is the book of God. That is the hadith of God. And the best hadith, according to chapter 39, verse 23. And according to chapter 54, uh, sorry, chapter 52, verse 34, God says, if they know they are truthful, let them bring an hadith like the Quran. They can never bring it. You cannot compare Sahih Bukhari to the Quran if you are in your right senses. Only a crazy or mad person will compare a man-made written work to the book of God. Now, so chapter 31, verse 6, let's see what God says concerning people who follow other hadith apart from the Quran. So let's see what God says. Chapter 31, verse 6. God says, Women and nurse and among the people, Man yashtari lahwa al-hadith li yudilla an sabili allahi bighayr al-ilm wa yattakhizaha huzuwan. Ulaika lahum azabun muheen. Now, Let's see what God says. God says, and among the people is one who buys, who purchases, or who buys the diversion hadith. God gave you Ahsan al-Hadith, the best hadith. You said you don't like the best hadith. You need the diversion hadith, lahwal hadith. In order to deviate from the way of God, because God gave you the best hadith, which is the way of God. That is the guidance of God by which God guides people. You said you don't like that. You need lahwal hadith, something to divert you away. In order to deviate from the way of God, because according to chapter 34, verse 6, the Quran, which is the book of God, guides you to the way of God. You said you don't like this hadith. Now, since you like the other hadith, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, this is what God saying. Without knowledge, most of the mainstream Muslims who are following Islam today are only following Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, but they don't even know. They don't even know the hadith, if you ask them to quote. When you tell, ask them something, they'll say, Ahi, it is in the hadith, but I don't know where it is. You see, blind followers. Right? So without knowledge and accept it in mockery, they take it, they accept whatever the hadith tells them, and in mockery as well. Right? So for instance, the hadith will tell them Prophet Muhammad married a six years old girl and consummated the marriage at nine years old. It's okay for them. Even though it is mockery, they like it. They will say Prophet Muhammad left a big beard. For them, it's okay. They will do the same. Right? They will say Prophet Muhammad had 11 wives and he slept with all of them in the same night. It's okay for them. They are take it. They accept it in mockery. They like it. Then God says, those will have a humiliating punishment. Yes. God gave you the best hadith. Because you are so dumb, you don't see it. Because you are so blind, you don't see it. You prefer lawal hadith, and hadith which can lead you astray, and to be in mockery against you, you like it. You tell me a whole prominent prophet of God couldn't find a better woman to marry than a six-year-old girl. Come and open the Quran and prove to me where he married six-year-old girl. I'm waiting. Bring your scholars, your best scholars, to come and prove to us where God told you the stupidity you are putting in your books by saying the prophet married a six-year-old girl. So you and I, who is the enemy of the prophet? Is it me preaching to the people to follow the right way of God or you fooling the people to come and follow garbages? I'm going to quote two hadiths for you from their own Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim hadith. So I'm going to use their own Sahih hadith to tell you something from their hadith and tell you how contradictive they are contradicting themselves. Do you see? So now I'm going to show you. Now, according to Abu Sayyid Khudir, he reported that Allah's messenger said, he says, Allah's messenger said, لا تكتبوا أني ومن كتب أني غير القرآن فليمهه وحدثوا أني. He says, Abu Sayyid Khudir reported, he said, Allah's messenger said, do not write about me or from me, do not write anything. And whoever writes about me, other than the Quran, listen carefully, this is Sahih Muslim, in their own book, Sahih Muslim, other than the Quran, should efface it, means wipe it out. If you write anything other than the Quran from he, the messenger, right, wipe it out. 
Then he says, and narrate from me. Which means narrate what he just said. That nobody should write anything from him except the Quran. Now, this reference can be found in Sahih Muslim 3004. 3004. In the reference Sahih Muslim 3004. English reference book number 42, hadith number 7147. Do you see? Arabic reference book number 55, hadith number 92. I just quoted this hadith. It can be found in Sahih Muslim in their own collection of hadith, which I don't believe. They believe it. But ask them, why don't they want to understand this statement the Prophet made? If really he said this, I don't believe he actually even said it. I don't need this to tell me not to believe it, not to follow hadith. Right? But this is in their hadith. And it is telling them not to write anything except the Quran. So how come they have hadith today? Do they even respect him? If he really said it, do they respect him? No. I gave you the re reference. Sahih Muslim is there. Khaled. The second evidence narrated by Aisha. She said the prophet said, why do some people impose conditions which are not present in God's book? Then she said, whoever imposes a condition which is not in the book of God, then it is invalid. It is falsehood. Even if he imposes 100 conditions, for God's conditions are more binding and reliable. What does it say in Arabic? This is what their own hadith says. Reference, Sahih al-Bukhari 2155. 2155, Sahih Bukhari. English reference, volume 3, Book number 34, hadith number 364. Arabic reference, book number 34, hadith number 106. is telling them that whoever imposes a condition which is not found in the book of God, then that condition is what? Invalid. So who are you now to come and tell me I cannot follow the Quran alone? When I ask you where in the Quran did God say I cannot follow the Quran alone? You can't. So who now who is fooling himself? Me or you? Your own Sahih Bukhari is telling you that Prophet Muhammad said, whoever imposes a condition, ladies and gentlemen, I know I hope you understand what condition means, right? Let me break it down. Condition. He says, an assumption on which rests the validity or effect of something else is a condition. Then it goes, a mode of being or form of existence of a thing or a person. It can be conditioned. So, for instance, I can say the condition I'm in right now doesn't suit me to stand up. So, the mood of something, right? Information that should be kept in mind when making a decision. So, if you can give me an information that I can keep in my mind when making a decision to follow the Quran alone, then you bring a condition by telling me I cannot follow the Quran alone without the Sunnah. All I can ask you is bring it from the Quran. Let's see. Because according to you, in your own hadith, the Prophet is saying, He says, whoever who imposes a condition which is not found in the book of God, then that condition is what? Invalid. This is the hadith, according to the hadith. You understand? So the Quran itself is saying, if you impose any condition which is not in the book of God, that is invalid. So how can these people even face me face to face? How? How can they disprove me? How? I'll use your own hadith to whip you. Wallahi.